Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and in today's video we are going to create this website and it's a website for new banking and it's a website for banking for younger people so that's their target audience and as you can see it's going to be really simple and it's going to be uh, really modern looking the only thing which we are going to do in this video is to create this hover effect for the buttons as you can see but i'm going to show you at the end of the video how you can further spice things up a little bit and add some animation to these background elements if that's something that you want so let's get started All right, so let's get started. And as you can see, I already gone ahead and prepared this file for this tutorial. If you want, you can pause the video here and make a screenshot of all of these colors, all of these character style sizes. And as you can see down here below, I have two icons as well as the logo just to speed things up a little bit. Uh, I'm using premium icons and I will link down below what I am using. So you can check the description of this video to see which icons I'm using. But you can, of course, use any free icons that you have or the icons that you already have and you have already used in some of the previous uh, projects that you did. So to get started, if you remember, and let me quickly hit a preview once again just to show you. Uh, we're going to start by creating this top navigation, then this main nav, and then we're going to move on and design this part of our design. So for this top navigation, what we're going to do is simply use a rectangle tool and I will choose this color. I'll make it 1920 by 70. So I will position it here and here, make sure I don't have any border on it. That's basically it. What I'm also going to do is uh, create my grid layout. So if I click right here, uh, you can see that I have 12 columns. Uh, gutter width is 16, column width is 122, and finally uh, margins are 140 uh, from here. You can make this uh, wider, taller, it's really up to you and you can do whatever you want with it. But for the sake of this video and uh, for the sake of speed, I'll just leave it there. So as you can see, I'm just going to drag and drop uh, my location icon here. Make sure it's in the center and make sure to position it right here. You can see that it's linked asset, which means it comes from the original document because I have my original design open right here. That's why it's showing as a linked asset, uh, as you can see. So what we're going to do is type in our location like so, make sure it's left aligned. I will make sure that it's white or perhaps I can even, let's see, maybe I can create it to be a, a light gray. So let's see, maybe I can create this to be this color like so. And let me just quickly make sure that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So I will lower the opacity of these columns down like so. So I will use Poppins 18, so it's this one and I'll make sure it's left aligned like so, and let's position it for example 20, like this. Next, I'll hit Control D and type in for business, because for example, maybe uh, this bank is just uh, focused on uh, clients uh, who are not business clients at the moment, but uh, in the future, perhaps they're going to focus on business clients as well. So what we're going to do next is and drag and drop our phone icon here. And let's see, maybe we can drag and drop it here. And I can go ahead and simply duplicate this for business, position it to be right here. Make sure it's at 20. So shift one, two, and I'll type in just some random phone numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm using Poppins font, as you can see, just in various different sizes and colors. Make sure it's 20. You can do this by holding your Alt or Option key. And I'll position it here. Now let's go ahead and organize things just a little bit. So what I can do is call this phone. I can call this location. And I can give this a name. So top nav 
BG just so when I send this to developers they will know exactly what this is so they can export it. Now if I show you my original preview once again you can see that I have these flags right here and I generated these flags using a plugin so I will click right here and plugin is called UI logos so you can go ahead and visit it and simply locate these country flags and the bad thing about this is we have to create some shapes so let me jump inside and see maybe I can make this shape let's see 40 by 27 just so that I don't make it be too big and what I need to do is use a repeat grid and create 194 so let's see 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and I will do uh, the same down so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so we have 10 and 10 that's 100 and let's do uh, a bit more let's say so let's drag 10 uh, more so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then what I'm going to do is remove the repeat grid and delete 6 so 2 4 6 hit delete and now I can select all of these go to my uh, plugins panel so right here click on country flags it's going to work its magic and there we have it so now you can select your own flags uh, depending of which country you live in i'll choose serbia because that's my country and i'll also choose let's say uk for english like that as you can see they are the same size i'll go ahead and delete the rest of them so what we did right here is um, it placed Albanian flag for some reason so let's go ahead and change that real quick and I'll extend it to 1920 like that now I'll go ahead and select these two drag and drop them and if I go to my last panel you can see that they are named correctly and this is once again let's see top nav BG so you have to be careful as you can see uh, it can do some uh, weird stuff from time to time so let's go ahead and I'll position it here and let's see maybe I can position it this to be 40 so 1 2 3 4 and I'll position this to be 80 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 like that and that's basically our top nav dam uh, hold your shift key select all of them hit ctrl G call this top nav like this and now let's go ahead and focus on our bottom now or our main now however you want to call it so let's scroll just a little bit down and what i'm going to do is basically go from here to here and for this one let's use 1640 by 120 like that make sure you aligned it to the grid i hope you guys can see the grid because i've already pasted it down just a little bit and now what we're going to do is uh, use a corner radius of 10 and then I'm going to use the shadow without any border so click on the shadow I'll use 10 20 and 20 like that and for the opacity let's say I want to use 10 maybe even lower so let's use I don't know 5 for example let's go with 8 I think that's fine and finally let's apply a background blur which will give it just a bit more spice let's increase this to 10 for example just to see how that looks like that looks well and for the background blur i'm just going to increase this to 50 percent i'm going to leave this at 15 and this let's say to be at 20 and what this is going to do if for whatever reason you want to extend this website down like this and to add more elements obviously so when people start to scroll down this is going to follow and it's going to have this blurred background and let me quickly show you how that is going to look like so I will just go ahead and add a quick image here I'll position this image just below and if I position this over it you can see how it looks like so it basically has this nice blurred background over it so that's how that works basically now let's go ahead and position it 50 from the main nav from the top nav sorry so one two three four five i'm going to call this nav bg like that 
and let's see maybe we can now drag and drop this logo inside like that and let's see maybe we can make it be at 40 so one two three four i'll go back to here and let's see i'll position this to be in the center like that it's still 50 from here that's fine so what i'm going to do next is start by creating my button right here and for the button we're going to use this rectangle tool once again so for the size let's see 224 with 60 that will do nicely and for the spacing let's go with 40 so one two three four so same as uh, with our logo position it to be in the center like that for the color let's choose this color let's remove the border let's give it a name of btnbg like that and let's see maybe for the corner radius we can go with 10 something like that and for the text, I can go ahead and uh, type in some text. So let's type in login like that, because people will be able to log in uh, to their uh, background servers and to their dashboard. So they can check out uh, how their uh, status is looking like, how their funds are looking like and so on. I'll choose Poppins 24, make sure it's white, make sure it's center aligned. And then I'll select these two, position them here and here. Hit Control G, call this login BTN like that. And I will make a quick component. So hit Control K and I will add a hover state, call it hover. And on hover, I will just change the background color to this one. And let's go ahead and hit preview, but go back to the default state. And in our preview, you can see how that looks like. Now let's go ahead and continue where we left off. And I'm going to add all of these uh, menu items. So let's see, we're going to create them to be 24 uh, once again. So let's call this accounts and let's give it a color. So perhaps I can give it this color, looks good. Make sure it's poppins, make sure it's this one, go from the center like that. And you can also position it to be here. You can use the repeat grid for the text as well if that's something that you want, but I'm not going to bother. And let's duplicate it by hitting Control D. I will go ahead and type in digital like that. And let's see, maybe I can position my digital 80 from this button. So 60, let's see 80. And I can go ahead and uh, position each and every one of them to be 80 from each other. So this is going to be invest like that. Make sure it's at 80. Hit Control D cards to choose all kinds of different credit cards and debit cards and so on. This is going to be a loans and people can obviously choose from different loan types. And finally we have accounts, so 80 like that. I'll go ahead, select everything, make sure it's in the center, make sure it's in the center with this as well. And finally, now that that's completed, I can go ahead and select all of them by holding my shift key, hit control G to duplicate, uh, to group all of them and call this one main nav, like that. And I'll just change this to be like this, just for the sake of continuity. Now, finally, let's go ahead and design the rest of this page. What I'm going to do actually is drag and drop my image inside and I'll position it somewhere around here. And I took this image from Envato Elements. Uh, image is a premium one, but you guys can obviously use free ones from the websites like, I don't know, Unsplash or websites like those. And as I said in multiple of my videos, I always recommend that you use premium images because premium images like this one come in sets and you can use majority of images from those sets and images are extremely large and they are really easy to work with. What we're going to do next is type this text in. So I'm going to uh, hit my T key, type in new bank for a new page. And for this one, I'll choose 90, make sure it's left aligned like that, position it to the grid. And now I can organize my image just a little bit. So perhaps I can extend it to be from here 
something like that i think that works well make sure this is left aligned it is i'll make a duplicate of it and choose 24 and for this one i'll write in discover why we are the best bank for me millennials that's basically it now for that one let's see maybe i can position it let's see let's see let's see so to be at 40 or 50 so let's position it to be at 50 like that i'll just make sure to position it up a little bit and now what i'm going to do is create my button so i can use this button and extend it and make a duplicate of it but i'm just going to use uh, the bigger button which later on if i choose to uh, design a little bit more i can then use this button instead of this one and then keep extending it so for the color i'm going to use this one for the color radius i'm going to use 10 i'm going to remove the border and for the size let's see 366 with 70 and let's actually extend it just a little bit so it covers uh, three columns as you can see right here 70 is fine for the height and what i'm going to type in inside is learn more i'll make sure to use 24 make sure to use white color make sure it's center aligned like that position it to be in the center like that go ahead and go right here btnbg learn more i'll position it here hit ctrl g and call this uh, main btn because as i said later on you can choose to uh, copy and replace this button and place around your design so let's position it at 50 like that hit ctrl k to make a component and let's make a hover state and call this one hover as well and inside of the hover state simply change the color of this background like that so if i go to my default state hit right here to my preview you can see how that looks like and it all works well the last thing i'm going to do for the text before we move on to these background shapes is hit ctrl g call this text position it down position my image down as well and finally i'm going to use simple rectangle lining up from bottom of my menu to here select these two and click right here just to make sure that my text is in the center from here to here that's basically it for this part what i'm going to do next is use my ellipse tool and create this huge huge ellipse like that i'll position it in the center just behind these people and perhaps even just a little bit more i'll position it to the back and what i'm going to do with this uh, shape is i'm going to simply copy from my original and hit paste right here position it here and basically this is how all of that is going to look like so if i just position it to be a little bit to here and i'm going to show you so we have the fill color and fill color is basically this color we have the opacity at 20 percent and that's basically it if i increase the opacity to 100 you can see if i hit 2 on my keyboard you can see how the opacity looks like now one final thing uh, that we are going to be creating is that shape right here i'm going to use the pen tool for it and i'm going to simply start by creating some random shapes and some random anchor points like that i'm going to close it to here to here to here and let's use the fill color let's use this color as our fill color but instead of solid color we're going to move on to linear gradient and what we're going to do for the darker color let's choose this color for the lighter color let's choose white like that flip them around so just position this to be down like that and for the white i'm going to lower the opacity down to zero and i'm going to simply uh, let's see i can go ahead to here and click on my points and i can simply make sure that it goes to here as you can see it can be really stubborn from time to time but the main important thing is that it works so you can reorganize things just a little bit and you can also click right here 
lower the opacity of this one down just a little bit so perhaps to 40 percent i think that will work fine and we're just going to leave it at that now let's call this shape and position it just on top of the background circle and as you can see now we have some visual interest here as well you can also go ahead and add a background blur you can decrease the amount increase the opacity and you get something like this if that's something that you want you can do that as well but i'm just going to leave it at here and perhaps lower the opacity down just a little bit more of the overall shape to let's say 60 or 50 percent or something like that and i think that works well Finally, what we're going to do is add these shapes. So for the shapes, let's start with the circle. I'm going to do this, give it 100 and give it color green. I remove the border like that. Hit Control D to duplicate it. I rotate it by holding Shift, select both of them, click right here. Now we have our circle, which can be X as well. What we also need is just a circle, so I'm just going to uh, draw one in with 90 by 90, for example. I'm going to uh, uh, remove the fill color, choose this as a border color, increase the border to 20 or to 10, for example, maybe 15. Yeah, that works well. And reposition it here. And I also have my line. So for my line, I can simply use my pen tool and create a shape like this. Hit escape. And for it, for the border, of course, we are going to use this same color. For the size, let's use 10. That works well. Simply click right here to round the cap. And if you want it to be even bigger, you can type in 20, for example. Or let's go with 15 because that's uh, what we did from this one. And if you want to change these shapes just a little bit, you can do this. You can maybe even rotate this just a little bit. And you can really play around and display how this curve is going to work and look like i'll position it here and perhaps i can even lower the overall size to something like this so that's basically it that's our design uh, for this tutorial the only thing i forgot to do and i will do it real quickly is lower the resolution of this one to 40 because people have selected English instead of Serbian language and you can clearly see that right here because everything is in English and whatever language you are using just make sure to do that so people can know which language they have selected you can obviously play around with these elements a little bit more if you want to but if not you can just leave it at that one final thing which I promised uh, to show you is how you can animate this simply duplicate this uh, artboard and let's play around with these shapes so perhaps i can position this one to be here i can position this one to be here maybe rotate it maybe i can rotate this just a little bit more perhaps i can even increase the size of these people just a little bit and finally let's play around with these background elements so i can hold my shift alt and left click to lower the size of this circle and finally i can double click inside of here and simply reorganize these paths and these uh, anchor points a little bit just to change the shape a little bit so perhaps to something like this that's all that's all you need to do and finally let's go to the prototype and let's click right here drag it to here instead of tap we're going to use time so we're going to use auto animate easy and out and duration is let's say one second now simply drag it to here do the same thing and click preview and see what you got so as you can see now we have this background shape uh, changing but it obviously changes too fast so what we're going to do is actually change this to be five seconds or four what's the maximum it's going to give us 4.0 let's try like that yes and let's go to here 4.0 press enter and now if i hit my preview key you can see how that looks like so obviously we have this nice animation and it's really smooth and it lasts for four seconds so if this is something that you want you can play around with it but the trouble with that is 
as you can see Adobe XD does not know where to put the hover effect on so that's one of the drawbacks but if you just want to uh, show to your client what are the possibilities of uh, this process and so they can understand a little bit more clearly what they can do with this design in the future if you want to share this with, the, with your developers so they can understand your thought process behind it then this is a great way to show them that simply include time between these two artboards and simply show them what's possible. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope you found some value in it. If you did, make sure to press that like button. I upload new videos every single week on design, passive income techniques, motivation and more. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.